Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This time around I would like to address the students or barely just finished people, just graduated people. Namely, markers are expensive or and in general just tools that you want to use for design are expensive. So how would you go around this? And because I figured things out very slowly, I just figured out really cheap ways to get markers. And I'm not saying that the markers like uh, Copics or Prismacolor or, or, or Stifi markers are not good. Please sponsor me, thank you. But as a student, you really don't have to invest into those expensive ones. They are obviously, they might be better or better, but you can still get by with other tools. And this is what I want to show you now, something that I figured out that probably many of you already know, but you really don't have to invest that much money. So let's see what I'm talking about. Let's go. my shopping spree and what did I buy these for one euro like three markers for one euro and also some hazelnut chocolate rolls because they're yummy okay let me unpack this and show you what it's all about so let's start with the Hema fine liners Hema is a quite a commonly quite a common and well-known supermarket uh, chain in the Netherlands and you can find a lot of um, office material there and also for kids and these are some of my favorite they are super cheap two euros 12 pieces of fine liners 0.4 millimeter in thickness and uh, yeah I, I really have not much bad to tell about them if i quickly show you yeah so basically th these these are the fine liners i use most of the time where they're not good at all is if you want to use them with watercolor so don't they are not water resistant at all but if you just want to use it for design with uh, markers it, it, it does quite a good job i think i do 70 to 80 percent of my drawings with these so i can really recommend them as a nice and cheap alternative i bought this set right now this one i had already at home and this i bought from action as you can see action uh, you can you can find them in most Western European countries, I think, but there are so many cheap supermarket chains like this all over the world. So I would say just go out and look for options because I'm 100% sure you can find uh, cheaper options for your uh, markers. And other than these two, I also bought these three sets. This is four euros each. And with four euros, you can't even buy one piece of Copic marker. So here you have 12 euros, 13, 14. There you go. For 14 euros, all of this. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's, that's perfect for a student. You don't have to go anywhere else. And obviously, they are cheap. So they do feel cheap. The, the, the printing on them is not exactly fantastic. I don't think... So even, even the numbers, let me show you here. But hey, that's what you get. And other than that, it's it's really nice. And usually I also showed you in a video, just for three euros, you can buy a whole set of um, copy papers. So basically paper that you put into the copy machine or printers, printer paper. You don't always need to use marker paper, especially if you just do black and white sketches, stuff like this. I always have copy paper for it or uh, just a very cheap uh, sketchbook with paper in it. And then what do, how do these work? Well, just like every other marker, especially design markers, you have the chisel edge and then you have the more pointy, finer edge, which actually, yeah, people don't really use that much. What I would say is in quality also, not, not just the look and the feel is cheap, but also, yes, the, the colors are quite saturated and strong which sometimes is actually good, but I do like them more 
a little bit in the in the not beige what's what's the word oh there you go that's nice uh, a bit more like nuanced step back but the other thing is so i think i reorganized them a little bit for this but they are very random so you so you get a box like this with all sorts of different colors in them and then yeah you have to mix and match a little bit to get what you want but you can get there what uh, so usually i have these the two i'm gonna take these three browns and with this you can actually achieve quite nice uh, wooden textures so let me quickly put down a drawing of a very simple bench there we go a very quick one this is just something that you have in the backyard of your grandma and gra grandpa and then they always have these things actually what's the functionality of these why, why are those cut out there somebody knows tell me because uh, i would be curious right now and then let's just give it some shadow so let's switch to the browns the brown that i have i just i still I, these are still relatively new for me so what i do is i just put down a little bit of taste of everything and then I decide which one works best so I think I'm gonna take this olive one away I won't need that that might work okay this is nice this is a nice uh, light base color this is a darker version of that and with this I can do some of the darker crests and whatnot okay so I'm gonna take this uh, let's see I'm not really worried about making this super precise. I also I do enjoy a little bit of the messiness. It feels more dynamic. I don't want to stay always inside the lines. All right, let it dry a little bit. So you can see it's it's actually a nice cover. I, I like the pigmentation as well, but it does so. It is a little bit runny. It's. I noticed that on my other markers, they are um, a bit more precise. So if, if you like your, your marker edges to be nice and sharp, you might not quite get it out of these. So I go a couple of times over where I think there should be more shadow. This would be the marker area. Oh yeah, and another thing that I forgot to mention. So I think this is, I, I bought three, and these were all the grays that I had out of them. So I, I actually I don't even know how you're supposed to put the set together. So I have a warm gray one, and then a cool gray three, cool gray six, and a cool gray eight. And then we have a black. And this was in the set as well, so I had to, I had to buy it in a set. So this is all the grays I have, if I want to use some grays. Okay, and now I'm gonna put my grays away. Take my browns and I think, not this one, this one was the next in darkness, so with this one I can do some of those and this time I'm using the thin edge. And always make sure to look up some reference when you do this. I'm not doing it right now because I'm doing a horrible job, <laughs> but yeah, it is it is important to look at reference. You always want, so, so the thing is, you always want to be able to do this out of your head, but it's not possible to do that unless you build up a visual library first. So I make sure that I look at everything and I draw it a couple of times before I attempt to just draw it straight from memory. So this, this is another mm, not so good thing with this fine liners. It's a bit hard to do a uh, line thickness with them. My, my style is a little bit, I just go over and over again until I have a, a nicer line thickness. That's why most of the people love to use the paper mates because there you can really vary line thickness. So yeah, I, I would say this is perfectly enough for, for a student or a beginner or uh, what, what you need it for. So pigmentation wise, let me jump back and forth. You really have a lot of interesting. So as I said, you do have to mix and match. And another thing as well, what I said with the cheapness, yeah, this says is vermilion. If you have any familiarity with uh, markers and you look at this color, it's, it's not vermilion. It's more towards a dark pink than vermilion. I think this, uh, the French vermilion, and this is orange, there you go. So none of this is really vermilion. So this is a Copic Vermilion. 
There we go. A nice red. And let me go back with the French one because I see that's the, the closest. Actually, it went from orange to a, a light. Now it's back to orange. So when it's strong, it's orange. And when it dries up, it's almost a little bit pinkish orange. But yeah, neither of these is vermilion. So prepare, prepare for that. So you, you have to always lay them out a little bit and see, see what color is what. But uh, as I said, you look, look at this. You have a, a nice, let me, let me just take these three. But actually also for artists, here you have a really nice blend and I bet you can wear it. Let me go back to the 130. So yeah, these numbers, man. But I think you can work in a nice blend there as well. And the good thing is, what I forgot to say, you also get a, a colorless blender. Uh, they don't work fantastically. At least I didn't find them working that great. But uh, you can try and use them nonetheless. I never use uh, colorless blenders. I just I just use, try to use, blend them together. And then I have this one left. For okay, this is something totally different again. So that's what I'm saying. So you have to you have to set a couple of these on paper for you to get a, a taste of them. Something. Let me draw a quick architecture one. I'm gonna shut up while I draw. So as you can clearly see, I'm not an architecture student, <laughs> but I do enjoy these architectural drawings quite a bit. So let me quickly lay in some uh, grays first. Oh, you, you see this? This is, this is what I mean. So be prepared for some fun things. Okay, this might still be a little, nah. this I want to be a nice wooden uh, surface and we already let me actually try the other browns for that one just go out wild with this one should be a nice strong blue so let's say if we have a more brutalist style big block house out of concrete then we want some strong lively wood there and then maybe this whole thing is made also out of wood I'm gonna make this all with this one and see now now actually I like how this gray here interacts with it. Oh no, this is quite dark. I have a much lighter green. Is it this one? So see so I was I was expecting this to be more yellowish and this is going to be actually the green that I wanted. Yeah, it's not as, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I try to say. So don't trust these colors, just try, out, try them out for yourself. And then I'm just gonna plop down a couple of things here and then go over this. So we have a little bit of variation. See, see how much darker it is than you would expect. And try not to put down too much stuff. You don't want too much noise there. There we go. Basically what I wanted to achieve with this video is just really show you that you can you can do stuff like this with uh, really simple and really cheap tools. You don't have to spend, you don't have to get shocked by how much uh, Copic markers cost. Just make sure to go out and buy the stuff that is best for you. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something from it. Feel free to hit that like or subscribe button if you did. You can follow me on Instagram for regular updates and see everybody next time. But until then, wish you a great week. Bye-bye.